I've actually lost count of how many PCs I've built at this point, but it's got to be over 500. And I've used pretty much every PC brand out there. But what happens when your PC parts break? Well, you've got to return it. I've sent back lots of PC parts at RMA, and now I'm here to share my experience with you. And because of the number of PC parts that I've used, I've probably run into problems more often than most of you guys out there. So hopefully this video will enlighten you as to which companies handle their RMA processes the best. We don't have all of them to rank today, just the ones that I've had to use. So if there's any missing, please tell us about your experience down in the comments. I want to hear positive and negative though, not just negative. So without further ado, let's transition to Tearmaker. So we have a mixture of retailers and manufacturers here, which I think might be useful. A lot of these are UK specific. So we're going to start with the manufacturers because those will apply wherever you are in the world. So from the ones that I've used, let's start with Intel. So I've had to send back probably two or three Intel CPUs because they're faulty. And I've used probably about, you know, upwards of 100. So not too bad. And their RMA process was actually really good. So I'm going to put it in A because all they needed me to do was show it not working in a motherboard, give them some of the serial numbers. I sent it back. It went somewhere in Switzerland, I think, or Austria or something. And then I got a replacement within like a week. And not only that, actually, I'm bumping them up to S because I forgot about this. So I sent them back a, I think it was a 10105F uh, because it wasn't working. And they sent me back a 12... 500 I think or 13500 something like that basically a better CPU than the one that I returned so you know that's if that's not S tier what is and I was quite surprised about how quick it was considering it had to go all the way to Switzerland so pretty good getting off to a good start with Intel Antec is the next one and I've only very recently dealt with Antec um, and it's not actually it's not because anything was faulty I've never had anything faulty from Antec uh, I don't use them very much, but I did misplace some of my screws um, for one of the liquid coolers, which means that I couldn't use it. And basically, they found some screws for me and gave them to me for free. I just had to pay for ground shipping from um, Netherlands, which was like £6. And I think for the fact that I've lost the screws, I'm going to call that fair enough. So I'm going to give them an A, but that said, that's on the proviso that I haven't had to actually return anything to them before. So bear that in mind. They were very responsive though, and they got back to me within like a day or two, so that I'm considering that very good. MSI are up next, and this is a bit of a mixed bag because I'm going to put them in... I'm, I'm hovering between B and C tier here. I think I'm going to put them in C tier. Reason being that I've had probably three or four MSI products that I've had to send back. Um, so I sent back two motherboards and those were actually replaced okay but at one point I had an RTX 3080 that I sent back so I sent it back and they took the maximum amount of time to fix it which is 30 days per their terms and conditions they returned the card back I turned it on and then it broke again within two days and this is on a known good system so there's nothing to do with me because it's a system that was working with other graphics cards more powerful graphics cards with no problem whatsoever so they sent it back and they hadn't actually fixed the problem and then i sent it back again and they ended up just refunding me and not fixing it which is okay but this was in the mining boom so i bought the card for msrp which at the time was about 650 pounds and by the time they refunded me the cost to replace that 3080 was about £950. So I'd actually lost a load of money by returning this graphics card. And I think what they really should have done is just sent me a graphics card. I'm sure they had plenty of them they could have sent out. So that's why it's going in C. You know, if they did manage to replace it all after that time, I would have put them in B because they did do what they said they were going to do. But they did take ages doing it. So that's why it's going in C. So next up is Gigabyte. And... This is another one where I'm hovering between B and C because I've had some good experiences with Gigabyte and I've had some bad experiences, but I'm going to land on C with this one because I have had to return one graphics card to them before, which wasn't working, and they did replace it. It took, I think it took about five weeks to get the replacement though, so I wasn't particularly happy with how long I had to wait, but they still held it up. So, you know, end of the day, that's fine. Um, but one thing that really did annoy me is that I bought this, um, I think it was X570 Aero white motherboard. 
And these motherboards had this known problem where you had RGB RAM and it wouldn't pick up the third stick out of four. So it would work as RAM, but it wouldn't pick up any of the RGB. And I went online looking at forums and everything, and lots of people had the same problem. And it wasn't just one RAM kit either. It was lots of different RAM kits all over the place. I updated the BIOS and tried everything. And I said, guys, look, this isn't good enough. It's not reading the data off the RAM sticks if this is happening across multiple different sets of memory. And they just said, well, no, it's not in the QVL, so we're not going to replace it. Well, you know, technically that's true. That's just a cop-out, isn't it? Because the QVL lists are always so short, they don't have enough stuff on them whatsoever. So I never use a QVL because it just limits your choices so much. I think that was just really poor behavior from Gigabyte. They've not acknowledged the problem and they've not sent out a replacement. And I've actually seen lots of stuff online with other people not having good experience with Gigabyte. I mean, imagine having a graphics card design flaw that causes the whole PCB to crack and not replacing it. I think that's just unacceptable. So that's why it's going in C because whilst on a couple of occasions they did see me right, I did have a couple of poor interactions with them which drags the score down. So Aero Call up next and this is this is a solid B. Okay. So Aero Call was fine. So I had a faulty case which had a RGB hub that didn't work. So I sent a support ticket and it took about three weeks and they were able to send out a replacement hub. The, they did everything fine. The customer service was great. They were very nice, but the problem was the amount of time that it took to send it out. So that's why it's going in B. But really not much else to say about AeroCall. I didn't have a massive problem with it. It just wasn't excellent. Corsair up next, and this is obviously a brand that lots of people know about. Corsair is going in the S tier because I've had excellent experiences with Corsair RMAs, and I'll tell you the story. So a lot of this is to do with power supplies. I've not really had much else Corsair gear break. I think maybe one or two sets of RAM I've had to send back, but I've usually done that via the retailer because it's broken straight away. That's the nature of RAM. But with Corsair, it was because power supplies started breaking, and I had a particular problem with two sets of power supplies. Um, one was this CV series. So you had this series called CV... 455, 50, 650, and they were really good value, quite cheap. I bought, I think I bought 20 of them all at the same time, and I must have just got a bad batch or something because all of them caused like RGB lights to flicker, and there was a problem with the SATA connection that powered it, and all that kind of stuff. Eventually, I did manage to get the ones that didn't work replaced, and that was about half of them. So they replaced 10 power supplies, which is pretty good. Um, so I was pretty happy with that. And then later on, this is what really clinched it for me. Um, because I had the Corsair CXF series, you know, there's ones with the RGB fan on the bottom. And about half, I, again, this is another one, a great deal where I probably bought about 20 or 25 all at once. And, you know, at least a third of them had really bad coil wine. Like you could hear this like across the room, it was that bad. And then replacing it with another power supply fixed it. So it was definitely the power supply that was at fault. And the noise was coming from the unit itself. But, you know, I digress. I sent these back because the coil wine was unacceptable and they accepted it and they didn't have to do that because coil wine is not RMAable normally and I was really impressed that they did manage to do that and the turnaround time was really fast so I sent this back to Corsair and I think they actually use in the UK they use scan to do their all their returns so I sent it back to them and they sent me back another unit within like four days which is absolutely brilliant and that is top tier service you know how like I said with Intel earlier how quickly everything was turned around and they did it without any fuss, and that's why it goes in the S tier. So the final manufacturer on this list is Team Group. Team Group are going into the B tier um, because they did well. They I only had one interaction with them. This is for a faulty RAM kit, which just simply wouldn't start up with the PC. It was like an extreme RGB kit, and it was like 4,000 megahertz CL... Uh, like 18 or something like that. It was it was a very fast kit of RAM and it just didn't work in any system. So I sent it back. The problem with this though was that I had to send it to Taiwan at my own cost. So this was this cost me about nine quid, maybe a bit more actually, maybe like ten or eleven quid. Wasn't that cheap anyway, considering it's just a RAM kit. Um, so I sent it off to Taiwan and then it was probably about two weeks before they dispatched the set back to me and then it took another week to arrive. Um, they paid for the return shipping back to me, so, you know, I suppose it's all square. They did fulfil their side of the bargain, and I didn't have to argue with them. They just accepted the RMA, confirmed the fault when they got it, etc., etc. The problem was the timing and having to pay for the return shipping, really. That that was that was what put this into the B tier for me. 
So if you're only interested in the manufacturers, you could probably just click off now. Um, but if you're interested in the retailers, and these are actually UK specific ones apart from Amazon, uh, then stick with me for those. But otherwise, I'll catch you in the next video. So let's get into the retailers. This is AWD IT. Now, AWD, I used to have a bad relationship with them. They just wouldn't tell me when things were cancelled. You know, they'd take my money and not refund it unless I said stuff. Blah, blah, blah. It was already bad. But in the last few years, they've revamped. I don't know what they've done, but they've made some changes and they've absolutely worked and they've worked their way up to the A tier now. So I had two instances where I've had to interact with AWD. And the first one was when um, something had gone out of stock. And instead of just leaving it or emailing me, they actually just called me as soon as they knew. And that gave me enough time to order it so that I get the parts in for the next day. I did really appreciate that. So that gave them a little bit of a boost. I've had to return, I think, one graphics card and one other component. I can't remember what it was, but they did handle it really well. They paid for the return postage. Um, I don't know if they do that for all of them, but I think they did with this one. Paid for the return postage. Simply replace the unit, no money exchanged hands, they're just straight like for like graphics card replacement. Can't complain about that at all. Um, and it was all done within a couple of weeks, so you know, seven to ten days really, and that was completely fine. Happy with that, that's why it's going in the A tier. Next up is Novatech. Uh, Novatech's going in the D tier because <laughs> I wanted to return something and they just didn't answer my emails. No, it wasn't faulty. I was returning it using my distant seller regulations rights and whatever, um, but it was still completely sealed. I hadn't opened it. I just didn't need it anymore. So I was going to send it back and it just didn't reply. I called the phone. I sent multiple emails. No one ever got back to me. So, you know, as it was a business expense, I just ate the cost really. But if I was a consumer, I'd be really annoyed about this. I would have really kicked up a stink. Uh, luckily, as a business, I guess I could kind of absorb some of the costs, but I really, really wasn't impressed with Novatech, so that's going right at the bottom. Scan, uh, I've had absolutely no problems with Scan whatsoever. It's you know, it's it's between A and S tier. I've had I've had good experiences with them. It just means you know you do have to pay for the return postage for stuff back to them unless it's within a certain amount of time based on UK regulations. But they've always been completely fine. I've you know I've only had to return two or three things, and there's been absolutely no fuss. Um, it does take them, you know, about a week to get through the testing and everything to make sure they confirm the fault. Um, so that's why it's not quite up there with Corsair and Intel. But good experience all round. I think Scan is actually an excellent uh, online computer parts shop. Not so keen on their pre-builts. They're a little bit pricey and not as nice as mine. But you know, in terms of components, it's a good site to shop at. eBuyer, um, uh, okay. Um, I can't complain. They've taken things that have been broken. They forwarded them to the manufacturer for me if needed. They've done everything right. They just they just drag their heels a little bit. But this is it really it's between B and A, and I I'm not going to complain about E buy. I'm not going to complain about any of these in the B tier. They all did their stuff completely fine. They just didn't go you know with the speed or above and beyond like the rest of these guys did. So you probably knew this before we <laughs> even started the list that Amazon was going to be the S tier because they have the lowest barrier to returns possible. And I, almost certainly people will abuse this, but it's probably why they sell so many so many things. Fast delivery, easy returns if something goes wrong. What else can you ask for? I mean, the returns they accept without any question whatsoever, they refund you as soon as it's in the postal system. You know, if things are broken and it's within a year um, and it's after the 14 day period, you know, they don't have any obligation to help you. They can just forward you onto the manufacturer but most of the time, if you just ask them, they'll take the return anyway. So it's excellent, um, absolutely excellent service. The returns come in quickly. They refund you really quickly. You can get the next product in really quickly. Can't have any complaints whatsoever. So that's the tier list. And I'd be really, really interested to know if any of you guys have had experience with any of the specific companies that we've mentioned. And if there's any others, please tell us down in the description, because these things can vary from country to country. You know, in the UK, I might have this experience, but maybe if you're in the Philippines or the US or Europe or wherever, you might have a different experience. So have a look at these, see what you think, if you've ever dealt with them. And if there's any others, tell me in the comments down below. And until next time, guys, I'll catch you.